middle of the day, please. I don't have the very best of projection, and we don't want to use a microphone, so we'll try to be as quiet as possible, except when you're speaking. This is a, this is a unique kind of, uh, of a meeting. Uh, it, it will give you an indication of what the consensus of this board intends to do in the next year. We intend to listen to the community. We intend to get feedback from you on a regular and consistent basis. And that's how we determine consensus. You have a community with 2,456 units. And I've said this before to people. And 4,500 residents. And you elect five people to represent everyone in the community. But only five people? Not really. Three of them can spend our money. Three of them can make monumental decisions for us. And so it's very, very important that the five people who sit together are people who you can, you can have access to, who you can influence, and who you can share your, your sentiments for the future of the community. And that's, if it, there's any difference in the way this board will do business, it's that it will be, every, every effort will be to make us as transparent, as open, and as receptive to the needs of the community. Now we have two new board members here today. You know them all, you know them both. Judy Moore, many, many years of experience in the community, and Jim Aker as well. Barbara Kinnett is ill, so she couldn't be in here today. And Rosemary is on a well-deserved vacation. She'll be back on the 5th. This is a meeting that is informal. We're going to be doing some house cleaning ourselves and just getting our, 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 our committee, our board in order. But then we want to start setting goals. And in the past, the goals have been set by the board. They can't be set by the board. They need to be set by the community. So there is nothing you can suggest to us that isn't appropriate, except we cannot discuss legally, we cannot discuss legal matters, we cannot discuss personnel issues. Other than that, there, there are no limitations to the meeting. And with that being said, uh, does anyone have anything they'd like to share? Yes, sir. I think one goal I share for the board that hasn't been done probably the last five years is a dialogue amongst the board when they make a vote and they come to these meetings and they have an opinion about what they want to do. Hardly ever does anybody yeah. really say, I'm voting for this because, or I'm going to vote against this because. What happens is we come in, there's a motion a second, and pretty much if somebody like me doesn't open their big mouth in the audience, mm -hmm. it goes, yeah. but, you know, it goes for it. And, and, I'm not saying anybody would ever change the vote. I'm just saying is it would be nice to know philosophically how you think about things. You know, so I, I think that the, the board members um, owe it to us to talk about why they want something or don't want something. It's very easy for the board to come up with their, their decisions, even though it's, it's technically it's not illegal for the board to sit and make decisions in, in a closed setting. But it has happened, and it's very easy to slip into that trap. It's just like being the president of the board. It's very easy for you to start talking about I rather than we. There are five people here. Each of them has the same authority. They have one vote. The only difference is that the board president has, just for propriety's sake, has a relationship with the management and with the attorney. We're going to modify that somewhat because not every, everyone has a different skills level. And Jim may be more appropriate in some areas, and Judy as well, Rosemary. So we, it will not be a, a, a board, a, a president-centered board. And that's the consensus of this board. But your point is very well taken. I've, sit, I've been attending meetings here for three and a half, four years. And over the years, and over the years, I've seen very few occasions where there was, was any interaction between board members and any objection to things. We've had some recently. We had some when you were on the board, but not much. There seemed to be a consensus of opinion when they walked in the room. And it doesn't help us to understand how they arrived at that. Sometimes it's an unpopular decision. Well, how did they arrive at that decision? Did they get input from the community? Anyone else have anything you'd like to suggest? I would like to have the board look at the possibility of having a separate lot for RVs and boats. Because RVs really don't need access to the boat ramp but the boats do, mm -hmm. and when there's a lot of RVs, there's more boats than RVs, and yeah. you, have, you can't get access to That's an amenity, Kim. Yeah. That's an amenity. What, yeah. what right. could we possibly do with that? Well, we would have to have an area. You'd have to vote to have that. 
vote of the membership to add an amenities yeah. specifically or make any for modifications. Okay. And right now, we, we, we had 1,242 people vote in this last election. We need, because of a change in the requirement made seven years ago, 1,229 people must say yes to anything that happened here. We had 1,242 total votes. And the most votes were given to Judy Moore. She had 938 votes. So even there, we couldn't even come close to a, a consensus, a, a legal consensus, to make anything change anything here. That's why we're, we're, we're looking at ways of modifying that, going back to the way it was. Um, and that's something that we're going to be talking about as a board. And Ray, Ray that's something we're going to probably ask the real committee to look into, to look into the legalities. How can, we, how can we effectively make this thing go away? We've, we've looked at it from another perspective. We've tried to vote change. We may have to go that way again, but it hasn't been successful. Granted, the last two, two votes that we, we put out there, there were some limitations in, in, in the pitch. We could, have, we could have refined our pitch a little bit and made it more presentable to people. I, I really think we've got to find a marketeer. Well, then that's something your committee can look into. Yeah, you've got to find someone that's really and under, good understand, understand something right now. Nothing that I'm saying to you is definitive because the board will then have to make a decision as to where to go with this. We're going to make some recommendations today, but they're only recommendations. You're, you're actually seeing what we would be doing if we were sitting in an executive session discussing these things. And we consider doing goal setting in an executive session, but it doesn't reach out to the community. And technically, the only way you can have an executive session is when you're discussing personnel or legal issues. So all the other subterfuge about getting a board together to discuss other issues is just not appropriate. So these are the kind of settings that we're going to make every effort to, uh, to, to schedule. Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I probably said this and already um, sent it into the board, but I think we need more sitting areas, and I think we need a coffee shop, any kind. I don't care if it's a curry maker and a Coke machine. But just now, I came from one meeting. You know, I, I, I wanted to meet with Mike about something from our meeting, and then, I, you know, it's lunchtime. I needed a cup of coffee, you know, and there was no place to get one. And... Um, I think that's a must. We need, we need social, we're a new generation, we're like a coffee shop, pub generation. You know, we need a place we can just go in. You don't drink decaf? <laughs> I couldn't even find that. I'd have drank that if I could. I don't get the impression that Judy goes only drinks decaf. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyone anyone has to co would like to comment on that? Second it. Anybody interested in that concept? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. several people have said yeah. that to me. Yep. We do have a kitchen there. Yeah, we yeah. have BYOK, bring your own beer. No. Yeah, but, it, but they charge us a dollar for it. We don't care. Is that yeah. working, Judy? Uh, no, it wasn't. A lot of commotion. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> no. if, you go to, if you go to Publix, they have the machine right there as you walk in the door. It's a coffee mm -hmm. machine. Yeah. They, it could be free, it could be a nickel, a dime, quarter, whatever you, whatever you want to make it. And that could be something out in the lobby. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that maybe the facility committee might start it's looking into. And in relation to that, also a uh, a soda water machine for the pool area. Um, we had that out there. The yeah. two water fountains. Well, the two water, would, I'm, I'm not saying we have a ser a person to service it. I understand they want a certain volume, yeah. but we could couldn't the board buy one? They're all you can buy them up from Sam's Club. They can go down there and get the. You know, I mean, couldn't the association buy one to have one there and our staff stock it? It doesn't seem it would be that difficult. No, I understand. Have we been there, been, have we been there before with that? I seem to remember that we have one in the golf building right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's I, a sewing machine in the, the card room. Yeah, is anybody using them? I didn't know there was one there. Oh, yeah, see, you know, in the golf building? Sure. Yeah, there's one yeah. in the golf building. There's one in the men's card room also. Oh. Okay. Okay. One of the car rooms is so defunct, you might as well forget it. It breaks down. Yeah. You, yeah. Get, you, get, you get rid of yeah, it. Maybe that's something. Maybe that's something. Is, maybe that's something. Machine. is are those machines the one in the golf building, the one in the car machine? Are they are they serviced or are they uh, owned by us? Service. No, they're service. Okay. I'm not sure the guy's name of service is the one over there, but I think somebody serviced it. The one in the it golf building. Yeah. Broke down then. It's been broken for a while. <laughs> it's the one, the one of the. No, not the car room. There's a. Okay. He doesn't have anything to do with that's the carbon ours. one. Yeah. Okay. The one in the in the golf building, I know there's been a sign that something has been out of order for it. It's just that one brand, that one yeah. soda. Is that one thing? Yeah. yeah. 
They're waiting for a motor or something for it. When did we try? When did we try it? Before, like ten years ago, or a full? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, we a couple years ago. A couple years ago. Couple years ago. Yeah. Try again, and then maybe look into um, you know, coke at it, and they they came and. Even if, like I say, even if we have to buy a simple one and just stock it ourselves, no. it would be. A I don't think I don't think we could probably get a vendor to come in here and do it. There isn't enough volume, but if we do it ourselves, James? we did have coffee service here about five years ago, and no one used it. They took it out. But okay. we don't have sitting yes. areas. Okay. If we had sitting areas, like out here, a few benches, and and sitting areas around where we could. I have a little privacy, maybe a screen or something between us and that front desk or a plant. Well, Kim, Kim will the will will this veranda area? I'll be with you in a second. This veranda area, will this will this be part of our landscaping redesign, or we'll be doing something to furnish it? And... I had hoped to do something to furnish it, to put little. I, I had envisioned little bistro tables out there or something uh -huh. like that. And behind yeah, so the, if we had a sitting area, there would be reason for people to take behind the annex. We have a sitting area right up by our front <coughs> deck. We have. A, a, covered area right over here on the right side of the pool deck. If you want to go adventure over to the uh, new platform we have over by the golf building there. I mean, there's plenty. Those tables are coming yeah. any, any time now. Yeah. But Carl, people come, we're, we're always coming. Got chairs right out here. Yeah, we're always coming out here. I think here. I believe there's chairs coming right out in. here. Yeah, but plenty of sit sitting here. Those chairs are hard. They plenty of sitting areas trailer. all around. We're okay, not, there's a difference of opinion. But, Hank, yeah. go to your room. <laughs> John, some people. I just like to say that perhaps we would uh, be a little bit more, uh, make a little bit more progress if some of these things we could say yes, we need to examine it, we need right. to send it to right. a committee, and maybe right. this is something mm -hmm. facilities committee could look into, mm -hmm. or one of the committees. But I think uh, you know, and it's good to get your ideas, but we really need to get the pluses and right. minuses. And so I think if we could look at it in that light, that yes, we'll list it up here, but recognize it's going to take some research. Okay. There's one yes, thing I hate to hear is we tried that before and it didn't work. Oh, yeah. okay, we've always done it that way. We've, we've always, always done it that way. That. You know, the, our population is changing. There are different people, you know, and time, you know. So I don't, uh, it should be, like you said, at least investigated without saying, although that's good background to know. Certainly agree. These kids are going to really change this whole uh, yeah. community on us. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to upset the balance here. This is not a good thing. I'm getting upset. It just if, if you think of this as a brainstorming session, mm -hmm. and when you're brainstorming, everything goes up on the board. But you, you, don't, you really don't argue the pros and cons. Yeah. You, don't, yeah. mm -hmm. you, don't, right. you don't try to resolve the issue. Exactly. You just put everything up there. Right. And then later... The, the board will look at all those things and maybe even assign task forces or subcommittees to look at them and, and try to work through some of the issues. One more thing, Carrie uh, uh, has requested that when you make a comment, please preface it with your name. Okay. Okay. I think, we, I think you've known most of them. Anyone that needs to let you know who they are, you're okay. He said the right words. Why don't I agree with uh, Jeff? What you need? You need a task force. Right. <laughs> a task force. Go to Dunkin' Donuts. See what they can do for us. Maybe they can give us a service. That's just an option. That's a thought, yeah. I know I, I've talked to other communities, and uh, you re it requires a, a fair amount of volume for an outside vendor to come in and commit their equipment. And we're too close to home. I know sometimes you get thirsty and you say, well, do I want to spend a dollar on a cup of coffee or do I go home and have a cup of coffee? And I think that's been maybe the mindset for a lot of people here. It may be changing. So I think you have, I would agree we have to explore it. John, I have three things I'd like to mention, but I can do them very quickly. The first one relates to what we're doing now. And it builds great credibility in a community when lists like this are made and when the board or board and staff or board and committees go through it, they make the decisions which direction they're going, even on the ones that aren't moving forward, say why. Because then people say, okay, you that was a thought, it's not going anywhere or going anywhere now, but some others are. So I'd strongly recommend that on anything. The other one has to do with <coughs> credibility. Everyone in a community hears a lot of things going on I think when minutes to meetings are done and decisions, be they large or small, are done, but particularly the large ones, 
connect those to the authority that exists in the documents that you have. Because uh, there's always a belief, and it's with every board, that's not what the documents say, or there's no authority there well, for they're that. Over, they're overreaching. Right, or overreaching. And I really think to make that clear mm -hmm. serves the community well, and frankly, is a check and balance on board too. Mm -hmm. The last uh, piece is a thought I have that uh, leaders, boards, need to do more than uh, manage an in-basket. And I felt for quite some time <coughs> that in addition to the general strategic thinking that you do, I think you ought to look at the major functional categories of Highland Lakes, be it uh, recreational activities, be it leadership, be it ethics, be it legal matters, uh, be it finance, uh, be it uh, buildings and grounds. And in those areas, look rather independently of what's going on in the Homeowner Association world out there in terms of best practices, have those go to the staff and the board to say, well, we don't want to do that because, mm -hmm. or gee, that sounds reasonable, let's pursue that. This whole thing is to keep Highland Lakes at the uh, leading edge of being the best it can be and spending uh, home association money, association money wisely. So just some thoughts. Good point. Please, if, if you can read my writing, be sure I've captured your thoughts, and if I haven't, I said respond to suggestions that the BLD needs to respond to suggestions made, yep. and the minutes, the actions need to relate to the docs, and categories of functions check out with other HOAs. Yep. Thank you. Anna, you had a comment? Um, Anna Marchand. Um, when I heard about this meeting, I said, well, this has been in the back of my mind for a long time, so I just thought I'd put it out there, but um, I really believe after talking to a number of folks that come in from different 55 plus communities that we should have a beautification committee. And the one in particular that I'm talking with, um, she did the one over in uh, the apartments that are just prior to Honeymoon Island, and uh, there are seven buildings in there, and what they did was, it was... Uh, um, the association provided the money, but a group of volunteers went out and purchased all of the plants. But before they did that, they had a designer come in. And a designer is, is normally a cost of like $50, and then if they come out with a, three plants and you choose one, you're looking at maybe $200, $300 for the plan. But the volunteers went out and they did all of the planting, and then they hired a, um, uh, uh, an actual person that would come and do maintenance on it of, of those seven homes. They had a big area. You raised this at the, at the town hall at the annual meeting. Well, I did at the annual meeting yes. about volunteering because yeah. a lot of people, you know, like my husband and I went around the pond, and it goes to the pond. Uh, we took like seven items out of the pond, and we don't expect, you know, facilities, you know, to be calling every time there's a bottle that falls in the pond. Uh, mind you, we waited for the alligator to leave, but, <laughs> you know, uh, so a lot of people want to volunteer. I, mean, I know for beautification you've got not massive like the seven homes, but, you know, the main entrance, um, designing things that are, that are easy, uh, easy to maintain, the, the four islands, and eventually if you do out here, maybe there's a spot that you might like, you know, four times a year, some color. That type and of thing. I see that Jean Jack Castello is going like this. She, right. She, she agrees, apparently. Right. Well, there's a, a, a few other people. Oh, Ray, it. would it be possible for your committee to look in the, into the downside of any of this, uh, having volunteers? Downside of looking The downside nice. of having volunteers. Having, volunteer. having volunteers <laughs> do that work. Oh, yes, we will. I think we But don't okay. we have volunteers? Why would finance look at this? Unlike the clubhouse? <laughs> <house? laughs> uh, uh, well, the reason why I'm saying you, you, you can have a long list also. But I think that Ray, his experience in the legal area might help him navigate this better. Am I correct, uh, Ray? Yeah, well, I've, Not, been, I've been yeah. reading up on 720 to okay. see what, what it requires. Right, and, and, uh, and that's one aspect. The other aspect again, is and, getting and, money to buy plants that we can mm -hmm. put in the ground. But, but after we, if, if it's approval for the, for the volunteers, then, you know, three or four or five years later, it could be that not, not everybody's interested in going around weeding and doing things like that. So 
hiring somebody uh, and having them do it. I think we already have yeah. a staff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's something that we yeah. leave for our management to, to coordinate, if in fact this is the way we go. I know the city of Dunedin has volunteers, and most of the communities that we've researched have volunteers doing beautification projects. Yeah. And in the past, what they've been saying to us is, well, it's liability. Well, my counter to that is the biggest liability we have are those pontoon boats. And if we can get people to go out there, you yeah, know, well, so are we on everything else. So if we get people out there in those pontoon boats, I think we can get somebody to dig a hole in the ground with a spade. But yeah. that's something that we need to research to see that we protect the association. Then we want to, yes. Some of these uh, assignments may cross over and it may uh, come require that committees get together and work on these things so that it's not just looking at it from one angle but trying to bring them together. One thing that we have discussed but we haven't narrowed it down specifically is we, we want to return to the policy that still exists of having liaisons between the board and standing committees and also the service committees. And the reasoning behind this is that rather than Take the time of our staff. They've got a lot on their plate. But we, as a standing committee, even a service committee chair, sometimes we feel, I can go right to Kim, I can go right to Carl, and suddenly their day becomes all confused. Certainly their momentum is, is, is interrupted. So the thinking here is, on issues such as this, you have an issue that you'd like to discuss, take it to the li 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 liaison person from the board. Uh, Judy Moore has worked in so many different aspects of this community. So is Jim, so is Rosemary, so has Barbara Kinnett. And we can find a place that they're comfortable with, where their competence, where they, where they have a, specific, a particular competence. So there will be a relationship with each of the committees and the board, and then we can filter it to the staff so that they're not, they're not disturbed on a regular basis. You know, people are constantly walking into your office I mean, and yes, it's nice to have that kind of a relationship, but they're busy. They've got things to do, and when they don't complete the tasks, people are critical of that. So let's, let's try this other method, and we'll, we'll, we'll determine these liaisons at another point. Hi, my name's Ray Booth. <coughs> Carrie doesn't know me. <laughs> um, I have uh, three ideas on openness. One. Open. Publish the check register monthly. Put it on the website or maybe even in the Islander. Two, publish the credit card statements so we can see who was, where our money is. <coughs> and three, display um, reports from our work order system so we can see how uh, a third of our money is working in, with the employees. Any feedback from anyone on that? Staff want to weigh in on it? Sure. Or do you want me to work on giving him information or getting it done out here? <laughs> what is it? Oh, come on. Lighten up, will you please? Prefer not be sarcastic. I um, prefer, Carl. Just threw an idea out there. You didn't have to go after him. I'm, I'm, well, that's a real question on my part. Okay, I know. What, but that's, what, that's for what the board, do you want not for to work on. Well, these are, well, these are recommendations, ideas, suggestions. Yeah. The, this, board, the board directs the employees. Well, let, okay. let's, let's, let's make one thing clear also, and I'm speaking for the five members of this board. This board is a governing board. This board is not a managing board. The professionals manage. The, the board governs. This is a community. It's also a business. And so they are the professionals who conduct the business. We have to oversee it. And so if you're expecting us to manage this place, we don't work here. And none of you work here. And you can't, and, I, and you can't, and I can't tell them what to do. You really can't. Because they have their responsibilities. You have a, a, an issue, bring it to your liaison, or bring it directly to the board, put it in writing. That, that has to be the future of this community. We're 40 years old, and we're still pretending that it's 1980, and it is not. <laughs> okay? Excuse me, John. Jim's recommendation or thought that if this is truly going to be open, no idea is a bad Absolutely. idea. We should not try to resolve or hash these out right. now because mm -hmm. we will not reach a Of course we not. And we, are, and we have and a time. We are, we're, right. we're not going past an hour on so this because in an hour, you're all going to be asleep. Sliced and diced. And by the way, I mentioned, and shut off my mouth, I'm Sam Messina. I should have mentioned my name. <laughs> Again. So I think we should just get back to not interjecting criticism or evaluation on things. 
Put them all out there. That's how you get a complete okay. list. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Mike Manchester, I would like to see somewhere to lock up bicycles out front. Because it's a little far for me to walk from home, but mm -hmm. I can ride my bike. Don't we have a bike rack by the uh, pool? Uh, by the pool. Both, sides both sides of the pool. No, both sides of the pool. And, 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 and we can leave we your bike, bike right here. Too. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. 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 And no, no one no, touches it. Ever. Ever. There's going to be benches. It's <laughs> You're over <for> two. <laughs> what we're also going to propose is, uh, and we'll refine the details of this, is a catchphrase. It really came from Anna Marchand. Sorry, Anna where we'd like to be able to interact with the community on a more regular basis. Town halls, silly. I mean, people come to eat a cookie and very little gets accomplished except complaints. Uh, we need interaction on an ongoing basis. When the activities committee is selling, that's when there's the most activity up, in, up there. Uh, this is a play on Anna's words. We want to do something that's called coffee, tea, and the BOD. <laughs> Which means that one of us, two of us, will be there, and if you have any comments, it's a good way to solicit and elicit feedback from people, not waiting for a particular occasion. And certainly the, the suggestion complaint form is there. One thing I'm going to recommend is that we remove the word complaint from the form. It's a suggestion, and a complaint can be a suggestion, but I don't like to write out complaints, and we'd much prefer to write out suggestions. Maybe we could do that. What do you think? I know your favorite. Yeah. You know, years ago, the uh, years ago they used to hold uh, they called the ward coffees, and uh, what all they did. You know, that was before all our time. But I think yeah. they would just get together, like in the great room, and have coffee and cookies and just kind of mingle. Well, thought was there someone back there? Yeah, I was just motioning him to come on in. No, no. Uh, some of the things that we have been talking about um, for the standing committees and the, and the uh, service committees, uh, we changed last year, we changed the, ex the, the, ter the terms to one year for standing committees. They had been two years and they were, you couldn't serve more than two consecutive years and if you served two consecutive year, two consecutive terms and anyone in the community wanted to take your position, they had to be appointed. And we found that a lot of people, two, one, didn't want to do that. They didn't want to be involved in that situation. They want to commit to two to four years. And some other people really objected to the fact that after two years, two terms, I could be out. You get a younger person moving in here who might be able to be functional for five or six or eight years. So what we did is we changed the, 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 the expiration of the term to one, it's a one year term. It ends on the 31st of December. I think it was short sighted on our part because what we have is we have a new board that typically comes in every year, and by the time they get up and running, it's the end of March. So what we'll discuss and likely propose that there's a consensus that we extend that to the 31st of, the, of, of March, so that we, the, the term would begin on the 1st of April and expire on the 31st. But that wouldn't affect this year. That would start next year. I'd suggest April 2nd. <laughs> you don't want April Fool's Day? <laughs> We're going to hold these meetings, by the way, on every February 29th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone? Donna please, has some. Please, Donna. Uh, my name's Norma Puthan. It says everybody's asking for things. I figured I'd ask for this now. <clears throat> when we have our parties, you know, and we have different bands in, some sound systems are good and some are sort of not so good. And I understand we have a state-of-the-art sound system that no one knows how to use or can use. Why can't we have a group of people trained to use that system that can be available for parties? Were you at the, uh, were you at the annual meeting? Did you see that the, the issue with the microphones? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we need the facilities committee to look into this. Not only, not only the sound system, but also to look into wireless mics that are effective. Uh, we have good equipment. Well, some of those microphones, we've had them inspected, and those things are not, the, not that good. The directional microphones, a person like myself, they don't work, because I, you have to actually eat it. You know, Rosemary Kane doesn't need a microphone, but I need a microphone, and so do a lot of other people. So why don't we look into that? So that's another assignment for the facilities committee. And again, all of this is to be confirmed by the board. Uh, two things. When you fill out a suggestion form, about something new or coming up here in Hyle Lakes, 
It goes to the facilities. Does the facility see all these forms? Because I know myself, my wife, and a few other people I've written up about maybe heating the pool down at the lodge sometime soon, being that we're fixing it up. And then I read the article in the paper, nothing in there about that, and then I asked one or two people, and they said they, they don't think it, they never saw it. Mm -hmm. So what exactly happens? What's the trail of I turn something in, where does it go, and do I hear a response back from the association, whether it's... So you're talking, bad, you're talking no, improving communications. Good communications there. Okay. So I'm not left in the dark. It means three years in a row, still haven't heard anything, and I'm not reading anything. The other thing is that the Eagle Scout Boy Scouts have what they call Eagle Scout projects. We have a lot of Boy Scout camps or uh, troops right here in Palm Harbor. There's a number of them, especially the one with the First United Methodist Church, Troop 26. There's every year two or three projects come up with these young boys, and they do fantastic work. In the past years, I always heard it's a liability issue. Well, the BSA is 100% insured by themselves. Um, there's adult supervision there. There's teams of 15 to 30 people who come out on any given day when their project's going to take off, and they do a wonderful job, whether it's cleaning out ponds, um, doing irrigation, doing massive plantings. They just do some beautiful things throughout our community. Dunedin uses them every yes. week yes. down there. So we need to get access and, and allow them to come into our community and hopefully beautify Highland Lakes. What, what do you think of that? Great. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 That would tie in. And it ties in with hers. Yeah. There's, there's another piece of bookkeeping that we need to clear up. Um, somehow several years ago, uh, the policy and procedures was changed. Uh, it had been that the corporate treasurer and the president were, were responsible for signing all checks. When you were serving as corporate treasurer, that had already been changed. Uh, any board member could sign a check. Now, it doesn't mean that you're, you, anyone is, is, is uncomfortable with the five directors here, but there needs to be accountability. And it used to be that the corporate treasurer was the one who signed all the checks. And in the absence of the corporate treasurer, treasurer the president. And in the absence of the president, the first, the second vice president. But some line here. Not so that when someone is walking in the building, Don, would you sign this? Now... Jim, as the corporate treasurer, he's been following this through along. I don't know the history here, and now I'm being asked to sign an invoice or sign a purchase order or sign a check. So that's something that we as a board are going to sit down, and if, if there's consensus, and I believe there will be, we're going to change that back to something that is a little more fiscally solid. Does anyone here care to comment on that? Yeah, um, you really don't have to change the words in the... Uh Policy. All you got to do is make it a policy among yourself that Jim has to sign it. We could do that, but I would prefer to codify it. Yeah. 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 yeah, so that it's, so that have, it's something so that, that, that carries, it carries forward. I have something that I think the board should be doing and, and possibly uh, would lend itself to more openness, and that is dealing with some of these elephants in the room. You, if you're familiar with that uh, expression, it means there's something... It's something that no one talks about or else they don't want to deal with it or it just kind of sits there and everyone talks around it. And there's several issues that we have uh, floating around at the pool and other places like that that uh, would be good for the board to at least assign it to something, get it resolved and by getting the research done on it and putting that out there so that you're dealing with facts and not just innuendos and... Uh, all those sort of things that float around. And one of them is the fitness center, and, and it's been out there, and it's, it causes problems, and it needs to be addressed. Uh, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, it needs to be addressed. And there are many others out there like that that we need to uh, look at. And unfortunately, I left my list at home, but I had about six or eight of them, and I think you can think of them. But they're those things that we're just avoiding because they are difficult and they are uh, not a simple answer. So they need a lot of study instead of all the talk that goes on. So that would be my recommendation. Rich, going back to that point right there with the fitness center, instead of pushing for this 50% plus one to revert back to 66 and two thirds or 50 or whatever it was, if you put this out to the community, say, look folks, we'd like to build a fitness center, whatever it is. And we want to put it here, and this is what it's going to cost. And, you know, you could put it out in a way where, you know what, folks, it's not going to cost you a dime. And how we're going to do this is we're going to borrow this money. 
We could do this. We're we precluded borrow. from borrowing money, you know. Wait, 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 we could do this. We are precluded from borrowing money. And th th this community has never borrowed, it's never had an assessment, and it isn't going to have it on our watch. Well, and and that particular fitness center is that's the that's the elephant in the room. We live in a, we live in, in one of the most well appointed communities in Florida. Mm -hmm. We can't compete with LA Fitness. We can't compete with Planet Fitness. Do we need a little fitness room for someone who wants to play a little bit of a, a, with with a, with a treadmill or something? Yes, we do that. I believe we need that. And if others believe that, maybe we can work something out. But we're not building a facility on our watch. Oh, yeah, I can't see that. Well, we need, we need to study and that. address right. that. Just like right. Jim yeah. said. Well, but you put it out there, advertising. Instead of pushing something that people say, well, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to give that authority to the board. I don't know. But you say, well, listen, folks, this is something that's just going to be good for everybody here. You know, the 85-year-old guy is not going to want it. He doesn't care. All right? I don't care if my property values go up or down, but if you just lay it on the line, folks, this is something that we really need. This is something that's going to benefit everybody, and give them whatever you say. Okay, we only want to put a little something here or there or whatever, and the association can take, can take that up. Okay, but, I'm going to call time. We're not going to evaluate no, this. No. We're going to listen right. to it's, what Jim said. This right. is not evaluation. No, I, just want to I know. It. We just said we're going to review it and study it. Okay. But we're not going to to get on our podiums and go one way or the other. It matters not which way you feel about it. This is the Let's first of a, of a number of sessions yeah. like this, and, and yeah. one on one. Well, this goes so. back to his point about more communication mm -hmm. about decisions. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And if, if, to do the research and do the pros and cons so that people see what's involved, then it all comes. Yeah. These are all hot about. issues that are under that elephant in the room, but they're, yeah. they're issues that need to be transparent to the organization so that they can get the feeling that yes, we deal with them, you may not like what we come up with, but it's been dis discussed by several committees and this was the findings. And then, then you live with it because that's what you agreed to do when you signed on here was that you would agree to live and you give up some of your rights and others give up some of their rights. But that's the way it, it, it works in an HOA. So I think you're uh, your comments are well taken. We just need to wait until we get ready to review it. So it is. Uh -huh. It goes back to the elephant in the room. I think you talked about the communication. I think one of the reasons that, that we didn't get enough votes that didn't pass is because I heard a lot in the community. I didn't wasn't one of ones. I heard a lot of people saying, "I don't know what they're doing here," you know. And I feel as though if the board would have said, these are some of our ideas down the road, and this is what we think would benefit the community, and, mm -hmm. and if it's changed, these would be some of the things we could accomplish. I think it's a, just a transparency of communication. It all locks into that. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want to offend anyone, but that bucket list that went out destroyed that the campaign. Mm -hmm. That bucket list, I wouldn't have voted for the darn thing if I read the bucket list. I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't see the necessity of being that specific with it, but it happened. What about a questionnaire? What about a questionnaire type thing where you send out? We did that with Creative Corner when mm -hmm. we first started. What do you want us to do with Creative Corner? So what do you want us to do? What, what's your, you know, write down the top priorities and have people say yes or no, I'm interested in this. And you, you take a tally of all the things that came in and, and maybe, you know, discuss them further if, mm -hmm. if there's stuff that people want. But we're living on our, I mean, my parents live here and and this is the same place it was when my parents lived here. And, you know, we haven't, we haven't moved on. And unfortunately, I was saying to her this morning, it's going to change 10 years from now, and it's going to have completely skipped this entire generation. And we're going to be having hip hop parties and, you know, I, you know, so we, in order to get what it is that we all need, maybe, maybe now that the demographics have changed some, we have working people here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Maybe That's a true. questionnaire, yeah. and we publish in the, in the Highlander what the outcomes were, mm -hmm. or... We use the carry, we use the website for different surveys from time to time. Maybe that's a, a vehicle for it, for us. For how many years? And movies, we have that all the yes, time. Yes, how many years have you been coming to Highlander? Uh, 40. 40? 40 oh, years? Oh, wow, my parents, wait a minute, I don't know. Wait, they were the original? I don't even know what the day my parents were. They were the original, original. wow. wow. I thought and we I were. came here alone. 
Wow, wow, wow. Seen, and you haven't seen any changes in 40 years? I haven't seen any changes. <laughs> really? As a matter of fact, they've seen the changes oh for the worse, actually. Really? Yes. I don't know. We've been coming down here since 1993 it's because of my in-laws. And I've seen, a, I've seen it change. Yeah, it's been a struggle getting it there. The only difference is the people. Like, people used to be very prissy, yeah. and everybody wore the same yeah. thing and, and stuff, and now people are like, you know, they're people with ponytails. I haven't heard, I haven't heard the word prissy in a long time. Yeah. That, I like prissy. <laughs> well, they prissy were. up here. <laughs> prissy. Can, can, I ask, can I ask anyone in the audience to weigh in on this? Hank, this, this, this comes to something that's near and dear to your heart. There's a dumpster out there, a street sweeper company uses a dumpster and they leave it here. Um, uh, I never really paid a lot of attention to it until recently and it's been brought to, my, brought to my attention by several residents who find it to be an eyesore. I went over to take a look at the, at the lot at the request of, of Hank and, and Carl also and the, yeah, they, they're just doing some measure of damage to our asphalt there. Uh, today, Carl, you, as you know, they pulled out one dumpster, dumped another, and they left debris. Oh my! <laughs> All together now. God loves my wife. <laughs> we didn't think we'd have to tell Tom Hurst to turn off his cell phone. <laughs> Question: uh, I asked Carl and Kim, is there any benefit to us having giving uh, a previous board gave them permission to use our lot? as a staging area for their dumpster when they sweep up the area. And I asked if there was any benefit for us, and Carl, is there really a benefit for us? Only a clean parking lot. Yeah, well. That would be the only thing. I have something to say. You do? Yes. Well, be on your best behavior, I will. you I promise. I took a survey today out there on Spray Court. There's eight families out there who nice. are tired of it. They really are. Uh, when we, when, if th this is the fifth dump that we had in here in the past week. There's been five of them brought in. So are bringing more in now because at one time you're piling the stuff five feet above the top of it. We get a wind blowing from the north and all that stuff goes out down red number What are they nine. bringing dumpsters for? It's blowing around. Now the people I was interviewing there today, twice the dumpster came, that guy with the street cleaner, going through the whole North County District, cleaning up all the chemicals, oil, gas, uh, um, Fertilizer, and they're emptying it in there. The other night we had a rain, the rain real hard, and guess what? All that stuff come down. That's documented county? for three years now. All the damage they've been doing. Be more than glad to show it to you. All that stuff ran down, goes down our driveway into our little sewer crate, and out into our lakes. Wow. Why are we allowing this to happen? This is the county that this has this. A subcontractor really? working for the county. Right? Is, there, is the county. So is, there's a lot more that you're not seeing that needs to be, you have to be made aware of, and it's wrong. Is the benefit that we get worth the uh, the damage and, and issues you're raising here? It doesn't sound like it. It's not, Don. Kim, we're, not Kim, Kim, we're not debating. Does, we're does the board need to get involved in this at all? Yes. We do? The, uh, the reason it's out there is because the... Contractor approached the board back in whenever it started. I'm gonna guess around 2013. It went to a board meeting and the board approved it going out there. Mm -hmm. Take it to the board meeting. If you don't want it there, it's make it legal. That's the board function. Don, would you research that for us? Why do they yeah. need the Why do they need the dumpster? They what they're doing is they're sweeping up the streets and they're using that as a place to deposit. It's where they empty the street cleaner. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, so we'll have uh, have the facilities committee look into that. When when it started, they were doing the streets every three months. Now they do it ten times a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing an increase in frequency. Mm -hmm. okay. And we'll wait for uh, as quickly as you can come back with some recommendations. And with both of you guys, as soon as you can work on these things, the better for us. We can get a lot of these issues resolved by the end of March. That would be <coughs> some other and, and thank you for taking care of that. And on the other thing, when I questioned these people this morning, I talked to every one of them. They have no problem with the fence being up there with the recycling pro, uh, uh, collection being made. I, I, because I said both things. And one was they were totally against it. Like the man says, you're reading my mind. I was going up there this afternoon. and But the recycling was perfectly fine with them with the fence. Thank you. And follow up to him. I have a friend who's buying a house on the corner of Spray. And I was in there yesterday with a the gentleman. We were going through the house. Mm -hmm. And he was 
bitching about okay. that dumpster and about that machine that comes in and cleans. He said one time it was 4.30 in the morning and felt like it was a jet went off, yeah. woke him up out of his, you know, dead sleep and scared him. Okay. So, so you're, you're saying it's a bad idea. We're in okay. Florida. So we'll have to put that on the agenda for an upcoming meeting, Tim, and we'll get the consensus of the board and move on from there. Um, I have one more thing that please. I just I brought up a long time ago, but I with um, and I just wanted to reiterate it, and that was um, putting room numbers as opposed to room names, um, because when when we um, register events and you know when I make flyers and stuff for events, it, it's um, it's confusing to say ladies' card room or ceramics room, or people don't know where those rooms are. And if we just had a number system. We do. It's room three. three. Five, three. Well, you know it's room three, yeah. but everybody doesn't know it's room three. Five. You know, and, <coughs> and so. Just put a little number up there. And across, plus, across, who, across you know, the why have to write. But why, it, I'm just, it's, it's a, a suggestion. It's, it's a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. When we first <laughs> moved into the community, I wanted to have a meeting in there when we were doing something with the redesigned task force, but half of our task force consisted of men, so I figured we couldn't use the ladies' card room. Yeah. Well, you tell you, you're the one who said to me one day, why don't you have it in the ladies' card room? <laughs> and I've been here all this time, and I said, where's the ladies' card room? So that's what, okay. what made me think of it. All right. Okay. Please put it on the list. Anybody else? I want to compliment the girl working the desk after hours mm -hmm. now, Susan. She's doing a great job up there. Yeah. It's a plus for your whole association. Absolutely. Anyone back there? <laughs> John? John Myers? I don't know whether you spoke to the issue of co-mingling with capital funds with operating funds. Co Direct, directed directed co to your chairperson on the finance committee. Sounds no, sexy to me. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't, we haven't co in, in years. Several of our capital <laughs> projects have been co-mingling both capital funds and operating funds. And that's a no-no. We've got to stop it. That's something that obviously the facilities and the finance committee need to look into. John, which one were those? Huh? Which one were those that we co-mingled? The large. Kitchen project? The large is just co-mingled. The project just called out something. You, you spent from reserves out. and then you spent mm -hmm. from operating. How did, the, how did the lobby get renovated? I don't know. You can't do that. It doesn't matter what the past lobby was done. It was, it was a reserve. We had $195,000 surplus one year. We created a, a reserve for lobby reservations. It was a reserve project. Right. Okay. Phil, you're right. Go to finance with it. It's finance. And you guys can work together on it as well. The, uh, anyone else have anything to add to the concept or anything else? John, I got one point. Sure. Uh, Santa and uh, I get into process issues, is what I worry about. And, uh, I heard, and I was wondering, maybe the board will do this, but when changes are made like this, either large or small, I would recommend, uh, and as I say, maybe we're over there, having staff input on those, because things swing several ways. For instance, some of the recommendations Ray made might be really good. You said staff. Mm -hmm. This is the input? No, no, staff input. Yeah. Might be really good for transparency, posting vouchers on website and things. On the other hand, all those things take time and effort, and there's a question of how much detail you really should be putting on a website. So it's that sort of give and take that has to be worked out. Uh, Carl's point, although pretty strongly made, I think, is one that needs to be considered. Okay? Speaking of the website, uh, have any of you visited the visitor side? You know, not the, not the, the in-house side, but the visitor side? Mm -hmm. Are you impressed? Would you buy here? Yeah. I think that's something that I would like to recommend that we, we rewrite it, that we form a committee and rewrite that whole uh, presentation of our community. Go out and look at other sites. Look at our sister site up at uh, Heritage Springs. I mean, it was built 15 years after us, built by the same developer based on this model. It's about half the size of ours. And they, that 15 years must have been really beneficial because they've got a wonderful website, they've got a wonderful facility. Uh, they use, their, they use their, their reserves intelligently. They don't wait until it's broken before they change it. They wait until it's, its time is up and then they move it out. I tell the story that I was up there with them when it was Jeff, who used to be a manager here, and walking in their, one of their activity rooms, 
And I looked down at the carpet. They said, what are you doing here? He said, oh, we have dances and dinners and all. We put a dance floor down. I said, this carpet really looks nice. He said, oh, it's a good industrial grade carpet. And, you know, we, we maintain it. I said, well, I said, it looks really good. He said, we're replacing it next year. I said, why are you replacing it? He said, because the year after next won't look so good. <laughs> so that's the objective, I think. We really can't try to milk it. And as you very well know, with respect to the reserves, you can't do anything else with that money anyway. So it sits there and sits there and you're not getting any interest on it. So why would you want your facilities to deteriorate? The money sits there doing nothing when you can be buying something with it. So would that be like in the category of, you know, a little bit more proactive future planning that's communicated? Yeah, it's still well under said, communication, well but said, a bit, yeah. bit more proactive and, future and planning. When people talk about a five-year plan. Really, your, your reserves are your, are your long-range plan. How you implement them is, is really what makes it work. And if you keep delaying replacing, replacement of things, you aren't doing the community a service. Well, that just needs some, it needs some tweaks. That's, I mean, I think it, it's sufficient for now, but it needs some tweaks, but it, it could be better. As most things can be. So as far as the, our, 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 our website, yeah, I think we need to, we've already put it down. Put a website up there. And other people have been. Well, that, he's talking about the outside, the one that not, not Take a look at visitor side. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, I, I couldn't read, read that. that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, I, I, I have a request. Well, thank you for noticing that, because I do yeah. want to be sure I'm capturing that. One a question that I didn't get to answer is, what is the One question that I did get an answer from Carrie this morning, but it was raised a few times. The Highlander now is not available <coughs> directly on our website. It hasn't been for about six months. It hasn't been. I, it's, it's new to me. I haven't looked at it that way. But has At anyone had problem? Anyone have a, had a problem getting access to the Highlander? Yeah, because it said click on the exit, but there's no exit on the page when you go to the page to exit on. Now it's on the box the, of the, the Dropbox box. There's a little X in the corner of the Dropbox. You can go through well, the email. Well, if it went through the one that you sent out later. And the email, it was there, but when you go in on the HOA page to the Highlander for March, hmm. there was no X there to exit out of. See, I did, it doesn't come up on my Dropbox account, yeah. so I yeah. can't see no, it. It wasn't well, there, but the email worked, but the other page does not work. Huh. Is, there, is there any any, any way we can bring it back? I think we talked about that earlier, so well, that it's an easy is, link. Is the spots are so big, they're, um, and I have shrink them, I shrink them down about five, <laughs> five inches, but um, they take up excessive spot space in the website and they slow it down. So I mean I could put them out there if I just put one out at a time that that would be probably fine and just uh, archive the rest in my files. What would be the consensus on that? Oh, don't slow the website down anymore. Well, there are all some alternatives uh, which the photographer was discussing earlier so that could just be a thing investigate Something the alternatives okay. that will make it more user friendly. We can only do so much with what we have right now. I'm not arguing the point. I just we've only been here a little over a year, and the reason we moved here was the activities and the amenities. I don't know what used to be. I know what is now, and I'm happy. <laughs> Good for you. So am I. Yes. <laughs> and so are a lot of people. The 220 some odd people who bought in here in the last year. I think they were they're pretty happy as well. But you know we have to keep improving. We have to keep looking to the future. Yeah, because really? because the amenities you enjoy right now, the amenities and the activities that attracted you to Highland Lakes may not attract people in 15 years. So... 15 years, I'm Right, but... Yeah. Well, yeah. Because we care about our property values. Dan, uh, before we get too far here, yeah. and, and we lose track of the list, I, I didn't come with a big laundry list here. And a couple of these things have actually been touched on, at least. I, I had down for goals for this year was improved attention to maintaining the appearance of our facilities, development of a formal procedure for processing resident complaints or suggestions, and I think a couple of people kind of stepped on, yeah, referred to that. Um, I just think there needs to be a formal procedure for what happens when somebody, and, and if you want to call them suggestions instead of complaints, that's fine. But All those I think when, when, someone, when someone makes a suggestion, 
they need to know what's going to happen at that. Yes. They need to know what to expect. And 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 you don't want to hear, well, I don't see a problem where you see a problem. What what you want is for your problem to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And if if the person who's looking at that doesn't see the problem, then the person making the suggestion mm -hmm. needs to look at it with that person. They need to discuss it. It needs to be a two-way dialogue on that. Once, once a, a resident has made a suggestion, mm -hmm. rather than just somebody looking at it, saying yay or nay, and moving on, bring them in say, really, what, what is your problem? Or what is the issue you see? And what can we do to fix it? Yeah. I think you saw and then maybe an explanation, if it's not fixable, if it's something that just can't be addressed, then an explanation for that person, this is why we can't take care of that. Right. At least you're listening. But from my, from you my, know you're being heard. Yeah. My experience in, in almost five years now here is they've been pretty good at this, but they get so darn many of them. It's overwhelming. And maybe by having this buffer now with liaisons, maybe that it can be handled by board people. And it's just overwhelming. I've seen the stacks that go in there. And I'm not apologizing for anybody. We all, we're all good and we're all bad in what we do. But the fact is, they've made a real good effort at this, I think. How many suggestions are we getting on a daily basis, Kim? Just curious. Well, probably a half a dozen from you well, alone. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's how we live in the back. <laughs> it, just, it depends on the day and what's out there. There's... Uh, recently with recycling, we've been getting about 10 a day. Because yeah. they were told that's the only way they had to do it. Yeah. Keep the recycling here was to, mm -hmm. I said, make phone calls. They wouldn't accept it. So the suggestion was the next step. Because people want to keep recycling here. That's going to be addressed on our next board meeting because we table, we table the issue. And I think the consensus is pretty much that we are going to remain a green community and stay with it, modifying the, the, the approach. There is a single stream system what we have here is disjointed. I know we disagree on that, but no, single, I'm for it. single I'm stream for it. is where everything goes into one container and they deal with it off-site. And uh, yeah, there, it, it, needs, it needs to be serviced on a weekly basis, not on a monthly basis. We can't burden the staff by having debris all over the place. And I, I haven't seen outsiders coming in here and using this one. Uh, Hank is saying, well, if you go to single stream, maybe they'll, since it takes more things. A single stream is what the county has set up now with the patients. Yeah. Single stream picks up, right? Single, single stream will have be... someone coming in on a weekly basis. If, if I that's, if all that's... agree with that. I like what we have now, but if we go single stream, they'll take plastics, bottles, and everything else. Yeah. But I think that's going to be messier for our... Yeah, now, right? Carl, Carl, uh, how often do you call for them to, to pick that up and clean it out? It takes about three weeks worth of calling just to get them out here. So what they told you on the phone was that, that, that wasn't that wasn't accurate. They're looking to do a sell job. Well, what? How much money have we received from them? Yeah, We're supposed we, to be paid. Oh, well, they answer the phone. They answer the phone, but they don't come pick up the container. Kim, do you have any idea how much money we've received? They they initially made a contract. Eight hundred seventy-five hours last year for everything. I know much, that's a fact. Did we get? Have we gotten any money this year? I don't think we've got anything yet. Nothing in this year yet. And I don't think there was a last check. Angelo said he hadn't seen anything from them. Well, then it's Angelo's as our accountant. He said, say, hello, we have money coming. Where uh, is well, it? Carl is calling them and saying, pick up the dumpster, and they're not responding. I called them so. today. I called them today. Yeah. Well, they're looking for a new customer. Yeah, they pick up the dumpster. That's why they take their time picking up the dumpster. They don't, they they don't offer single stream. We'll have the board look into it. Give us some research. Um, give us some more research on it, okay? On the recycling. <laughs> One other thing that uh, Kim will be looking into, there have been some complaints about illegally parked cars, commercial vehicles. I haven't seen too much of it, but there was recently there's been a, a, a vehicle out there. We have a towing away policy down at the, at the RV lot. And in order to be able to do that, you need to have a contract with a, with a vendor and post that you parked illegally, and Kim is going to look into it to see if we just have that as a deterrent up here for people. <coughs> Any comments on that? When was the last time we had a car towed or a boat towed? We don't never. have it. We haven't had anything towed. Because as soon as you touch it, you're, you're accepting liability. Yeah, I have a comment. Well, if there's, if there's, a, if there's a, 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 a tow, two of them within three years. 
I don't think there's any reason to tell anybody. Uh, you send a letter, you just ask the person, please remove your bidding goal. That's the first that's step. Yeah. That's what Kim has done. She's that truck was from Arizona, and they've been doing it for six months. So she was, she was following uh, the, the protocol, no, no. they weren't responding. Well, it wasn't but It's something to look into, certainly. But another, another issue we have is during events, people are parking on the grass, and, and that's come up a couple of times. And I've seen it when I came, came up here for events. Plenty of parking out there. Right. The lot's half full, but you're halfway across the lot if you take one of the spaces available so people just park on the grass or wherever they please. Um, I'm not sure what the best way of addressing that is. Okay. One suggestion has been that we have staff out there to tell people, no, no, don't park there. Go find a parking space. Opposed in the ground? I so don't the know. No, 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 no. I don't know exactly what the Florida law would apply. I know how it was dealt with where I came from. And that's if you had private property and you wanted to restrict parking on that property, you had to post it. Once you posted it, you could call local law enforcement and they would come and at the direction of an authorized person, they would write citations. If, if we're able to do that, I think people start to get $40, $50 parking citations. They'll put parking in the grass. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, do, we, and, have, do uh, we have enough um, handicap? I mean, is that, like, why is somebody parking here? Obviously, they want to be closer, but I know, like, when we come to events and we're with people that need the handicap, they're, if an event starts at 7, by quarter past 6, those folks come early just so they can get the handicap because they know they you know, walk too far. <coughs> and I think that that could be one, a little piece of, that, of the problem. That may be part of the issue. I don't know how much. I don't know either, but I, I, I don't think I need 104 drive. handicap spots, so that's the problem. We need so many. We got quite exactly. a few handicap at an event. They put, out, yes. they put extra. They put extra. Yes. 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 Just so many of us. The, the, handi the number of handicap spaces you're required to have are, is determined by the size of your parking lot. Right. But, but we add handicap spaces for events because we know we have more people who need them. Right. Rich, you, you might be able to speak to this. Are those enforceable, really? Because we're on private property. The sheriff is not going to come in and ticket someone who's parked there. If you call them, they will. Oh, during will, they, they will, they, will they do that? Because sure. it's, not, it's private property. It's just like the stop sign out here. Oh. If you go through that stop sign, you can get a summons. Okay. You can. Okay. It's enforceable. A couple of things before we... We're, we're just exceeding our deadline right now. I'm go, we're going to ask for... At the, you weren't at the uh, annual meeting the other night. But someone brought up an issue of some drainage problems um, in Gulf. Mario, do you want to speak to that? I, I listened to it online. You did? So I did hear it. Okay. Well, would the, would the there was a little gap in the middle of it. That, uh, <clears throat> well, he fell asleep, that's why. Yeah, I guess that's what happened. I don't know. Would you look into it? No, well, thank you. This is contact number. And also, referring to the facilities committee, in the policy, and I served on the facilities committee. It, it does suggest that each member of the committee be assigned a specific area in the community and report back to the chair on a regular basis of conditions. They can't be everywhere. They can't see everything. So if they see something, they get to their, their chair, the chair can now be, get to, in this instance, the chair can go to the, to, to the appropriate person, and it would be Kim in this instance. Uh, but to... to Designate some areas where they can actually go out and do periodic inspections, maybe on a weekly basis, and once a month at the board at the board meeting, if you could report on their findings. And this would be not all of the 684 area uh, acres of our common area, but the annex building, the clubhouse, the pavilion area, the golf building, the areas are, that are so important to the visibility of our community. You know, the board has a responsibility. And it, its primary responsibility is to maintain the quality of our respective lifestyles and also to enhance the value of our properties. And we can't do it if we look shabby. We can't do it if things are overlooked. But we only have a limited number of people here. We can't, we can't have a staff of 200 people to do 684 acres. So we all have to work as a team on this. So if you could arrange something with that, it would be helpful. 
And that kind of goes back to her thing too about volunteers. With volunteers. <laughs> yeah, but again, the feedback can't be directly to the staff. It's just not proper. You know, I've uh, been been around for a number of years and, and, can, and run a number of different businesses, and you could you can never you can never have the management under such pressure, and then evaluate them. You can't. Does there anyone have anything else they'd like to? We're five minutes over. Anyone else? One quick thing. I think you go back and read a lot of the stuff that Jim was alluding to too. Is the big key on sixty or seventy percent of this communication? And maybe I look at a communication committee or a group, some group of people that sit there and says, okay, these are all the things that we communicated. What's the best way to do this? You know what I mean? I don't know how many email addresses you got now, but she, she got a, a huge file, I believe, of email addresses. There's a lot of stuff we should probably put in blast off when the board approves minutes. You know, I know we put them online, I know mm -hmm. we post them here, but there's a lot of people that don't that's, that's come to look point. for it there and jump online. Well, mm -hmm. if an email with an attachment shows what the minutes were, I think those are the types of things that happen. How many people subscribe <laughs> to different uh, categories, and if they do not subscribe to it, they don't want it. So they're only getting, well, is there a catch off? Yeah, there's a to all, but they're not going to, they subscribe out of the board. They either want it or they don't want it. So if you start sending them all this stuff, I get nasty emails. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because people, they get too many emails. And I get phone calls, too, because I'm getting too many emails, take me off. They just literally call me up and wow. take them off the list. Yeah. They don't want to get the emails. So that's, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, I can see it happening, but if the best interest of the community is to communicate with more people, and if 40 people want to say the heck with it, then let the 40 not get the communication and don't yeah. suffer the other 1,300 emails or whatever you got. Do we, do we set policy it. based upon the lowest common denominator, or do we, we try to find no, the you middle ground here? You can't have the 15% that exactly. causes the trouble in your system generate what the rest mm -hmm. of the 85% want. So, John I, Myers? Jim, on your question of complaints, what's the action steps? If a complaint is submitted to Kim, Kim makes a decision, there should be no appeal. That's it. No what? Well, well Kim doesn't make board. the decision. Well, it goes I don't to, think it should be kicked up to the board. I think that's it. It doesn't go to the board. It goes to, <laughs> often it goes to a committee. Right. And, well, but if, 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 it's a, if it's a matter that deals with the manager, but she, if she makes a decision, that's it. She should not have any appeal. Does the but president that get that, a reason why? <clears throat> yeah. Why should you need an appeal? Not an appeal. But no, he said a reason, reason why. why. Yeah, a reason. Well, she, she makes a decision on whatever it is. Yeah, but the president should know. Yeah. You got Car yeah. Carl agrees with you. I like you, John. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 one last, so one last comment. Huh? Why, why don't we consider Hank, Hank, Hank Bill, Hank, Hank, Hank Bill, Bill, Hank, what are you, Bill or Hank today? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Castello. Why don't we consider having a committee made up of members oh, no. instead of instead of having it to be a, an authoritative decision or putting it on one person to be the bad guy? And then yeah. let the committee decide what goes to the board or not. And this way, well, most well, of the no's will come from your fellow members, yeah. and you can't get mad at a board member. Well, the, com the, com the committees really are, are, are the first line of defense here, ARC faci and facilities primarily on these issues. So, uh, it's the best way to get nothing done. And those, and those, are, those are residents. You're asking for another layer of, uh, of, of, uh, of operations here. I have to disagree with not getting anything done because there are things, there's not a lot you can do sometimes. But, for instance, the one that you all were talking about, the parking on the uh, grass. grass during uh, activity events. And that's when it's mostly done, is it for the shows. And so that came to committee. The first time it was made, it came to me, and I responded to the person. I did some research on it, asked Carl what we could do, and we tried the cones. I don't know that that worked all that well. Evidently it didn't, because she came back a second time, and this time we announced it in the auditorium, and it was announced. So people do respond to these. Uh, but that's that's the thing that has to happen. The person might not like the response and might still be unhappy, but all, most of the time they get a response. Anything else? One, one other perception, and this is a perception I've heard from many, many people. Why does it take things so god awful long to get done? Okay. Now, I'm going I'm to make one, one uh, observation. 
and Carl's probably going to get mad at me, but this one, but that's okay. How long ago did I make the suggestion, Kim, to put some tables and chairs from the pavilion onto the new patio in a temporary situation until our furniture gets here? Now, I don't know where or what the furniture has taken three, four months or whatever, we still don't have anything out there. So we have a nice, beautiful patio with no place to sit. And the golfing community is talking about it every day. Oh, there it is. There's our beautiful patio. Where's our furniture? I thought we were taking it from the lodge and moving there because the lodge is going to be closed. I thought that, well, well, that, was, that was suggested by me. Well, well that, that's, that's, that's real heavy. That's why it was rejected, because you suggested it. Just, we don't do anything that you suggest. It takes work. It just, it a of, just a couple of chairs. <clears throat> table. Carl, with the, I know there's a bad... The order, the order, for some reason, they haven't, they haven't filled the order. Can you explain it? I expected the order the beginning of February. I can't control what happens at the factory. No, but if we had, but, if you had you guys take a half an hour or whatever it is, a couple of chair, tables over there, a dozen chairs, whatever, people could be using it. Can anybody use it? Yes. Sure. You can drink, drink your coffee out there. Sure. Drink your coffee. Yeah, they put the coffee thing over there. Now. When, do we, when, do we expect, when do we expect the... Because good looking guys coming off the night hole. It's just... Can we, can, we, can we accommodate them? Yeah, I can accommodate them. Okay. Yeah, it's just, that, that's, that's, that's one more, good. one more, or two more. I know, I know it's late, but since we're rehashing, what is the status of being able to drive our golf carts to the clubhouse? We're still looking into it. They have, well, this, they can, I can, I can have an update. The, the council, the council that. had to weigh in on it, and so far we haven't heard from them. It's a legal issue. It was voted by the uh, commissioners to allow us in the beginning, back when it happened. All right. It's a, it was a resolution written. It has to be rewritten by our legal staff at the county level, put out for information for dues. It has to be publicized in the newspaper, and it has to be a hearing. So if anybody wants to object to it. They have the right to come up and object at that hearing. So it's a time time process. Now, if you want, you can call David Eggers and let him know that you're waiting for this to all happen. It wouldn't hurt. Um, Kim, you're following up on this, correct? So, yeah, it's it's happening. It's not happening as fast as we want it. Things go slow at the county level. It's going to happen. It's going to be a plus for our community. Thank you. We're going to try something also um, that I haven't really shared with the board yet or something that we had talked about in generalities, about reaching out to the community. We, you know that certain clubs have been reaching out to other parts of the county, and it's been very positive. Uh, Anna has been a lead in the Adopt-A-Pond program. Uh, I know there's been some mixed senses out there, but it's a good thing, guys, really. And it's not only my agenda, it's the, it's the agenda of the consensus of this community. But the fact of the matter is here that, uh, uh, where was I going with this one now? <laughs> I went off on a tangent. Doing work outside the facility. Reaching out to oppose maybe inside. Well, reaching out to the community. There's a lot of going. There's Gotta a lot of stop doing drugs. It's called Gotta stop doing drugs. Yeah. There you go. Where were we? Where no, were we? actually, it's called Brain Fog. Where were we? <laughs> Ray, that was not. Where were we with that, Nancy? Where were we? Do you have any idea? The golf carts. Golf cart. And reaching oh, oh, out to the public. Okay, yeah. Reaching out to bringing in people from the county to do presentations here. To educate us, yeah, we had, it gives we us. Had, um, it gives us. Girl, a, last night, the neighborhood watch meeting last week, she came out with the consumer protection agency. Yep. It she gives us credibility within know. within the community. They for just to, to pat the community on on, on the back. On the, back <clears throat> the, uh, the adopt upon program and our relationship with the Pinellas County Extension has made us the poster child for the county in, in the North County area. And there are things that they can do for us that they would never consider doing, but they see us now as cooperative with them. And in this issue here, yeah, we'll go to Dave Edgars, and we'll go to Mike Twitty, and we'll, we'll go to Mike McCurk. We'll go to the people who can benefit from having exposure in this community and who, who sit in seats of power. And I want to add one more thing. And what's really nice about High Lakes as a whole community, we, we can't get votes for local things, but in a county-wide, we're 84% of our voters vote every election. That is the highest percentage, mm -hmm. if not the state, definitely in the county. And they take notice of that. So we have a voice. We have a very good voice here in, in High Lakes. Thank you. Unless there's something else, thank you all for coming. We'll be doing this again.